thing. I'm trying to record a podcast. Hey, everybody. Your Natural Dog with Angela Ardolino. And my guests today are two of my favorite women, Melissa and Angela from Ford Legger. And I met these women, gosh, like five years ago at an event. And they reminded me of myself because they will only use the purest organic products and ingredients in their products. And they make incredible shampoos and grooming sprays. And I own a groom shop. So I remember being very like attracted to them and going, okay, I've got these experts. Teach me all about shampoos. And they did. Boy, did they. Um, the chemicals that are found in most shampoos, I experienced it myself at my groom shop where my arms would be raw from the chemicals. I would watch dogs not getting better and getting worse with some of these chemicals. So it's something that we really need to consider because our skin, our dog skin is the biggest organ and they absorb everything we put on it. So we need to make sure what's going in and on them is important. So we're going to learn all about the skin microbiome, what chemicals to avoid and how to find out if what you're using or your groomer is using is safe or not. Stay tuned. This is Daisy. She's our 17 year old rescue and her owner surrendered her to the veterinarian because she couldn't walk anymore. And the vet gave us a call and we rescued her, brought her to our rescue farm here. We took her off all of her uh, prescription medications. She was having seizures every day, grand mal seizures. She had no hair on her feet, on her tail. And we have her on a CBD regimen and she has come back to life. She's become puppy-like. She runs around and plays and she could live to be 20 years old and live a very long, happy, pain-free life. CBD Dog Health, healing naturally. Hello, Melissa and Angela. Thank you so much for joining me today. Anytime I get an opportunity to talk to you ladies is awesome because I learn something every time. Um, and I just want my listeners, that in case they don't already know this, that I own two groom shops um, that we also do daycare and boarding. So this issue of the skin microbiome is so important to me because I see what dogs are suffering from and the majority of them are suffering from some sort of skin issue. Two of my own darn dogs are, um, have, are very allergic to flea saliva and therefore, uh, they're always having issues because I don't use chemical flea and tick. And so I'm always dealing, oh, guess the fleas are back. Got to deal with that again kind of thing. <laughs> and um, having to bathe them often to get that uh, saliva off of them so that it doesn't turn out into a breakout. But what's interesting is that I know I'm not the only person who's suffering, you know, from dogs having skin issues. And I see all these, I'd say 80% of the dogs coming into my shop are suffering from some issue. And I think you also, I don't know if you know this also, but I bought my groom shop. So when <laughs> I bought my groom shop, I had no idea what I was doing. And so I went in for the first three months and started in the bathing room to learn it from the ground up you know, what, how this whole industry worked. I couldn't believe the things I was seeing, like literally dogs with their skin falling off, mm -hmm. no hair, literally you couldn't touch them. Um, I, I mean, I would come home crying. I'd also come home and the skin on my arms was coming off from the harsh chemicals and the, um, and the shampoos that they were using. Yeah. And of course the colors were red and bright blue <laughs> and I knew that wasn't right. And the fragrances that were in there and the dogs aren't getting any better. Um, I have uh, an autoimmune disease. I have rheumatoid arthritis. So I was getting flare ups nonstop. Yeah. I was looking at the groomers who were not healthy and just started to look at the ingredients in these shampoos. The fact that I, my arms were raw from bathing dogs all day in these chemicals really was a light bulb. And, and it made sense because I don't use any crap in, in my house. And, you know, I'm a big fan of the Environmental Working Group. Everyone should go to that site, ewg.org. They have a, a cosmetic database that literally shows you, and now a cleaning database that literally shows you all the chemicals that are in it. And what I love about you guys is that you've done kind of the same thing 
for our pets and their shampoo and grooming products. So thank you so much for being the pioneers and doing mm -hmm. something about it because it's a huge problem. These mm -hmm. dogs need help and these chemicals that they're putting on them are making things 10 times worse. So let's talk about the skin microbiome and how important it is that we take care of it. Can you tell, explain it to us, like what this, uh, this microbiome that lives in our skin, why it's important, what does it consist of? And then what do we do when shit goes sideways? <laughs> well, absolutely, we can do that. So a little bit about the skin, and hopefully you can see my screen that I'm trying to share. Cool. Um, your dog's skin and your skin has the same basic layers, but the outermost layer of that skin called the epidermis is about half the thickness of your skin. So let that sink in for a minute. This is incredibly oh. important. Yes, that is our new little rescue, JC. Oh, so um, cute. In her first debut, public debut. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I the love skin, her. The skin layers is incredibly important because the skin is the biggest organ in your whole body, right? It's the biggest organ in your dog's body. And it is the protective barrier between all of the environmental text toxins that are out there in the world, including what you put on them in shampoo and flea and tick treatments, all of that stuff, and their organs. Wow. So we've heard a lot about the gut bi microbiome, right? Right. The bacteria, the virus, the fungi that keep the gut healthy. And without this balance of the microorganisms, you have all these gut issues, right? All these health issues. You have diarrhea, you have skin issues, you have immune health issues. I mean, very similar to your rheumatoid arthritis, you have all of these kind of immune issues that can pop up in the body. You can also have bad breath, vomiting, gas, bloating, all sorts of stuff, right? The skin also has a microbiome, the bacteria, the viruses, and the fungi, which secrete the natural protection of the skin, just like they do in the gut. They live in the acid mantle. So that's the area above the epidermis. And Are any of them from... the same? Are any of them the same ones that you would find in the gut or on the skin? Some can be the same. Um, you know, I would say there's a significant lack of research on the microbiome for dog skin at this point. Wow. There's a lot more research going on on the human skin, and we are learning a lot, but there's still, you know, our focus is still a lot on the gut, and we need to kind of go over to the skin a little bit more. Yeah. You know, th this microbiome lives in the acid mantle, which, which is made from the natural sebum that your dog's skin secretes, and it's kind of in the fatty oils that their natural skin oil secretes. So if you use products that block the skin pores, that sebum can't be produced. You can't have the natural microbiome living in the sebum. Or you make the skin unhealthy with bad ingredients, which is very common. Or you add environmental toxins to the skin. It can greatly impact that healthy biome, that, nat that natural microbiome and the health of the skin and consequently the organs inside of the body. Wow. So let's look at just one type of ingredient in dog shampoo, preservatives. In four-legger dog shampoo, we use rosemary extract, which is a natural antioxidant with no known health issues. We also use essential oils, which have you know, natural antimicrobial and natural antifungal properties to keep the product safe. Conventional dog shampoo uses one of four types of preservatives. So in formaldehyde-releasing re preservatives, and you're not going to see formaldehyde on the ingredient list, you're going to see something more like DMDM, Hydantin, or some of these things. It causes damage to the skin. It destroys the microbiome. And the ingredients can be readily absorbed through the skin into the organs where they can contribute to a cancer diagnosis, either on the skin or inside the body. Other preservatives can also cause damage to the skin and organs inside the body. And it's not just cancer. It's hormone issues. It's immune issues. It's flaky skin. It's dry skin. There's a host of issues that can come about from using bad ingredients on the skin. You know, it is absolutely no surprise that cancer is the number one diagnosis in dogs, right? So for all the cancer, skin cancer is the number one diagnosis in dogs. 
And when they say skin, when they say that, when they say skin cancer is meaning it could be something other than melanoma, meaning melanoma. I always thought skin cancer always meant melanoma, but yeah, you're saying, uh, and it's caused by other chemicals that are, that are on the skin. Yeah, it can be. And, And, you know, think about it. You put that on the, on the body, right? It's absorbed into the skin where it's also causing damage. Now let's take this example of just the preservatives. And let's multiply this by the total number of ingredients in your bottle of dog shampoo. So you could potentially be introducing 10, 20 toxins onto the skin, which can disrupt the microbiome and which can cause long-term damage in the body. And these ingredients aren't just like one and done, right? They're cumulative. So they build up in the body over time. And when it's, when it's penetrating the skin, it's going through all three layers and then entering the bloodstream. Yeah, and it gets into the body. It can easily cause, you know, long-term damage. I mean, you're not going to use an ingredient once and then have a cancer diagnosis, right? Right. It's going to be a slow buildup over time. And, you know, for the longest time, people didn't really see the connection between ingredients and health issues. And now in humans, at least, you're starting to see these direct correlations between the products that you're using and these health issues. Uh, We have a really good friend of ours who was over talking to us the other day about the, she did a skin patch test and it looked at all the chemicals that she has a reaction to and it's all in ingredients. And she's like, all I have to do is use my four leggers dog shampoo on my body and I'm good to go. Right. 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 Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Because it doesn't have any of these hosts of, of toxic ingredients. So, and not to mention that when we're bathing, and I remember learning this from the human side of things, uh, we're usually using a warm water that opens up the pores. Um, I know the risk on um, for babies was the blood barrier, blood brain barrier not being formed yet, and therefore those chemicals are going directly into the brain. I now know that there's chemicals that are actually breaking down that blood brain barrier and which allows other chemicals to get in. How does that equate in the animal side of things? Do they have, do they experience the same thing? It is very much the same. Yeah, very much the same. Wow. And, you know, it's it's scary stuff, right? Because for the longest time, I don't think people really thought about the ingredients in their dog shampoo. We are so focused on food and the ingredients in food, but our bodies are holistic, right? They're whole organisms. And we need to really respect our dog's body as a whole organism. It's not just the food. It's also the ingredients that are around them. It's, you know, the flea and tick stuff. It's what's in their yards. It's everything. Because unfortunately, if you are, and that's what I, I agree with you totally, because of course, what, let food be thy medicine and feed that gut microbiome. But this is what I hear on a regular basis. Cause remember I'm not in the food part. I'm in the supplement. Oh my gosh. What, how do we help this dog kind of situation? And people constantly are upset because they're like, I don't understand. I am feeding him the best organic blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But that shampoo you're using or that supplement you're using, that's a synthetic. That's not pure. So they, you're right. It is an issue. It needs to go hand in hand. Being they, that they absolute. They absolutely have to be hand in hand because one thing about the skin that we don't necessarily think about is that it's a bi-directional organ. And so it doesn't matter how good the food is or how bad the food is. Either way, it's going to work its way out through the skin from internally. And then so simultaneously, you're dumping a bunch of toxins from the environment or from shampoo or other grooming products or thing like that and you've set up a firestorm and the skin is the literal battleground of things trying to get shed out from an internal source and things trying to go be absorbed in that you know may well be healthy but they're being inhibited because all you see on the skin is flaking and itching and scratching and the Lumps entire and bumps and yeah, it, I mean, yeah. You've, ju- you've just disrupted. And so that's why it's so important to not just focus on gut health and food. I mean, it's 
you can't ignore one in favor of the other and expect that you're going to have a healthy dog. It's just, it just does not work that way because of what Angela said. I mean, we're holistic beings or we're not, you know, in, interdependent of each other. Our organs all work in, in communion with each other. And so if, you know, if, if you've started a war in the gut, <laughs> it's going to show up on the skin. And if you started a war on the skin from an external source, it's going to show up on the skin, but it's also going to work its way in and eventually develop into other kinds of health issues that for many people, you know, they have a five or six or seven year old dog and they, and the, it's amazing how often they preface an illness with, well, all of a sudden my dog was sick. <laughs> like, no, it's not all of a sudden. It's what has been done to that dog and yeah. fed to that dog and vaccines that that dog has had to endure that have all accumulated. And now that dog's tipping point has been reached. Right. <laughs> and so I, you have well, sickness and it's not all of a sudden. <laughs> no, it's not. I, I got to the point at the shop when I used to spend a lot of time at my shops, um, just getting to know dogs and everything that was happening to them. And that was always the case. They would say all of a sudden, and I would go, um, let me guess, is he <laughs> seven, eight? And they'd be like, oh, how did you know that? Uh, mm -hmm. What are you, what are you feeding? Oh, I, he, I have been feeding him the same thing with no problems for the whole, his whole life. Yeah. And you're like, okay, that's the problem. That's the, um, that is the problem. But yeah, that's, I don't think people realize that they have become senior citizens and now they can no longer detoxify it any longer. Something needs to be done or helped. We need to limit this um, exposure of these toxic chemicals and their food and their environment and their, you know, grooming products. And there's nobody else like you. There is nobody else making products as pure as the two of you are. And so thank you for doing that. Um, so what are some of like the worst ingredients that you find in most shampoos? Like when I first, I just want my listeners to know when I met these two amazing ladies, I remember um, sending them what I was using at my shop and them sending me back what like a 10 page report showing me <laughs> every ingredient, what was wrong. I loved it. And now you actually have started a database so everybody could do this. Like this is what was, why this is so yeah. cool is that this is literally when I changed my life like 20 years ago. Um, discovering ewg.org and going to that database and going up to my shower and you know my bathroom and taking all my products and typing them in and seeing how they all had cancer causing mm -hmm. chemicals in them and threw them all the way and they were very expensive products yeah. so just because you're paying mm -hmm. a whole bunch of money i mean in the grooming world, you guys don't even know. There are shampoos that are like $100 a bottle. And they're purple and they're pure <laughs> chemicals. And they mm -hmm. make your dog white. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. We do know. <laughs> I want to talk we, about you know, what, what, know. I get, what I got <laughs> mostly requests, which always made me go, ah, was whitening shampoo. I want the whitening shampoo and I want. I used to literally, I used to go to, back to my um, employees and go, oatmeal stands for this. Never you, we do not carry oatmeal shampoo. Just nod and say yes when they ask for oatmeal and what they're saying is their dog has sensitive skin, we'll evaluate and give them what's best. But we would just start going, okay, oatmeal, or they'd hand you the crap they bought at PetSmart going, only wash them with this. Or the worst, the medicated shampoos that would be sent from the yeah. vet mm -hmm. and the conversation of, you realize what this is and that you probably shouldn't be stripping your dog's skin once a week with these chemicals. Well, so, and the, pro the problem with that is that, you know, we are one of the very, very few companies in any of the, the pet um categories that are certified organic through the USDA National Organic Program. And it is a big deal. Yes, it is. A lot of people say, 
it's not, you know, it's not that important if we, you know, if we just grow things organically. It's like, yeah, but you're still taking somebody's word for it. Right. That it was, in fact, grown organically. And do they even know what that means? Right. Because, you know, including the National Organic Program, no one is regulating the terms, the usage of the terms organic or natural. No. Nope. Any marketer can say their product is natural and organic. They can even put it in the name of their company, which is a sure sign that it's not because that's a big <laughs> violation of the National Organic Program. But wow. they know that if they use those words, then they automatically can command a higher price because people believe that is organic, even though that it's not. Right. And it's, yeah, and it's people just... people trust it, right? People trust it because they see that word. So they automatically, oh, I trust yeah. that. Yeah. So one yeah. Of the, I guess one of the first things they can do is turn that bottle around and read the ingredients. And I... Well, I, maybe. <laughs> right, if they're even on there. I'm amazed on in my world and, you know, dealing with full spectrum hemp extracts and medicinal mushroom um, extracts. How many people will send me a product and go, is this one good? And there isn't even a list of the ingredients. And I'm like, mm -hmm. don't even send it to me. <laughs> right. You haven't yeah. even looked yourself. There are no ingredients listed on this product. Does the website look incredible? Does it use all the right words? Yes, but there's not even, forget about at looking for a COA. There's not even a list of ingredients telling you what is in this product. Yeah, that and that is, that is absolutely rampant in it the is. grooming industry, that they're, everything is green marketed, right? It's right. marketed to suck the consumer into buying the product, and it's not based upon the actual ingredients. I mean, four-legger really stands for transparency. I mean, we are all about transparency of our ingredients. We are about a transparency of everything, right? I mean, all of our stuff is made through the organics program because it has third party validation of everything we do. I mean, everything from the label, which is reviewed, the order of the ingredients is reviewed. <laughs> I mean, awesome. everything that goes into what we do is reviewed by a third party to make sure it's accurate, it's factual, and it's transparent. And, you know, we did develop the pet shampoo ingredient database, which I pulled up on the screen, um, because, you know, after, in fact, you know, one of the reasons we started doing that was because I was, when I would talk to people like you, I'd say, I'd go back and I'd make this big old spreadsheet of all the ingredients that you were using in the shampoos and the potential impacts. And I'm like, you know what? This is becoming a lot of time. I'm putting a lot of time into making all these individual spreadsheets. I probably need to convert this into a resource that I could just point people to. And so we sat down, we developed the Pet Shampoo Ingredient Database. It's super simple. Um, you just go, you click on it. You know, if you have um, whatever product, you can go in and you can look it up, right? So you can see if it's natural or it's synthetic. How safe is it? And, and this whether is or the, not... the ingredient. This, this is referring right. to the ingredient, not the product. So you right. can look up right. every individual ingredient so and just see. like I did. Just like I took my yeah. shampoo, looked at an ingredient, typed it into ewg.org, I got this. It's same thing, um, listeners, you can do this. Those of you that are just listening, you can go to um, the database, which is, what is that website? Yeah, PetShampooIngredientDatabase.com. And then, and if you do want to see it um, and you're listening to the the podcast, you can also go to YouTube where the video, you can see what she's actually pointing to. But basically, she's got all the ingredients and she's letting you know whether they're natural or synthetic, whether they're good, whether they're safe or not safe, and whether they're organic, whether they can even be organic or not, which is really cool. So what and do you then, see the and most? And then in the, mar in the margin there, if an ingredient is not safe, according to that middle column of criteria, we list what Why? health conditions have ever been associated with that ingredient. Wow. So you can make your mind up if you want to risk your dog having a neurotoxin or an endocrine disruptor or a reproductive disruptor or, you know, whatever it may be, um, you, you, the information's there and you can decide for yourself if that's a risk yeah. you want to take. <laughs> And it's interesting because, you know, you see a lot of products that will have this kind of lofty description trying to 
not use the actual ingredient name, but using something like antionic surfactant, you know? <laughs> and so when you go and you look at that, I mean, first of all, you wouldn't ever want to buy a product where they don't actually list the ingredient name, right? Because they don't want you to know what they're using. But the, the interesting thing about ingredients, and especially in dog shampoo, is, you know, the focus on the industry is making money, Right. They're marketing to sell the product. They're trying to make it sound all green, all healthy, all organic to sell you the product. They're all about making money. They're using cheap, crappy ingredients that probably cost them a couple bucks, and they're selling it to you for the same price that we're selling our true organic product. And the interesting thing about that is when they develop these, these ingredients, so they might start with a coconut. And they run the coconut through a bazillion different chemical reactions. And they use oftentimes these toxic ingredients to extract out something from it. So like ammonium lauryl sulfate often is contaminated with 1,4-dioxane and ethylene oxide, both of which have very high correlations to causing cancer. But you're not going to see these contaminants listed in the ingredients, right? Because they're not ingredients. They're contaminants from the manufacturing process. Wow. So, and if you think that your manufacturer loves dogs so much that they're going to pay more for the product or the ingredient that has been purified of contaminants, you're crazy because they're about making money, right? And if they can get that, you know, ammonium lauryl sulfate for you know, $100 versus $150, they're going to buy it for $100 and not care about it being contaminated because in their mind, well, there's so little contamination in this one of just 20 ingredients. eh, That's not really a big deal. It is a big deal. It's a huge deal because like we said, these accumulate in the body over time, you know, so cancer doesn't just happen like that, right? It's mutations. And eventually you get to the point where the mutations hit like this, like we said, right? It didn't happen all of a sudden. Like all of a sudden my dog is sick. All of a sudden my dog has cancer. All of a sudden these mutations over time have accumulated to the point where now your dog has cancer. Now your dog has issues with hormone disruption. Now your dog has an autoimmune disease. And, you know, going back and looking at these specific ingredients and what's in your dog's shampoo, I think is just incredibly helpful to understand what's really going on in that industry. And, you know, we've gone through and we've listed everything that we could think of. We also have at the very top of the page, a request review tab. So if we're missing an ingredient, Ah, put it in here, submit it to us, and we'll go add it to the database. And I mean, this is constantly growing, constantly evolving. And we're happy to sit down and to add anything to it that we don't have in there. And I want listeners to keep in mind, because I just saw um, argan oil. And I know that's like a, just like they use natural and organic as a marketing ploy, they will also take one good ingredient and put that on the label as this is argan shampoo. And you look at it and it has barely any of it in there and it's all chemicals. So oh, if you if you want to hear me on my soapbox, Melissa's <laughs> had to hear me on my soapbox a lot. This is like one of my biggest pet peeves, right? They'll take one good ingredient or take one organic ingredient, right? So you'll take organic argan oil, right? And you'll add it to a product. It is a complete and utter waste of one of the most precious ingredients on our earth to use these incredibly precious organic ingredients and to mix them in with a bunch of other toxic stuff is in my opinion, a, just a waste of that incredible ingredient. And again, it's all about marketing and trying to trick you into buying it. Oh, but we've got this one really amazing ingredient. Yeah, but you've also got these 20 other toxic ingredients. And it is really time for pet parents to you know, wake up and say, you know, we are the advocate for our dog. And we are not going to buy products. We are not going to put our money behind these companies that are slowly contaminating our pumps. We're just not going to do it anymore. And a a really critical part of that for pet owners to understand is 
with the prevalence of cancer that's occurring in the canine species. I mean, it's over 50% of all dogs over the age of two will be diagnosed with cancer. I mean, that's that's just unacceptable. But the, the good part of that statistic, if there is such a thing, only 5% of those cancers are genetic. The other 95% are environmental toxins, which we can absolutely do something about. Absolutely. We just have to educate ourselves. We have to be able to be willing to make different choices that are better, be willing to, you know, rework our routine or our system in order to be able to use organic ingredients, which, you know, there's a learning curve. You know, the, the biggest comment that we get from our shampoo is, well, it's as thin as water. You know, it just it just runs right through your hands. Like, yeah, because it doesn't have any synthetic thickeners in it that you right. don't want. Right. And so yeah. just, you know, take five minutes and learn how to use organic shampoo and then you're done with it. And your dog is the one that's going to see the benefit from that and you because, you know, you're probably not bathing them in body armor or <laughs> or anything. So it's it's. um you know, it's just so important for people to be willing to change what their perspective is because their perspective is grossly contributing to the health, uh, the lack of health and disease in our dogs. Mm-hmm. And, you know, every new generation of dogs is sicker than the previous one. And we're going to wind up at a point where there's just no healthy dogs left. And then what are we going to do? Right. I mean, can you, I can't even imagine a planet without dogs. I, I, I'm just ready to go to heaven. Right. If that's <laughs> if I that's the case. <laughs> and people need to understand, like these are these are things that they take some getting used to. You know, when twenty some years ago, when I realized these chemicals were in everything, I changed everything, and all the scent goes away. All of those straw, we're literally used to and brainwashed to think that your clothing should smell like a fragrance when it comes out of the washer. Like when I see those beads being poured into people's dryers and all these toxic chemicals, they're on the dog bed, they're in the carpet, they're on everything. So we're literally bombarding them with these chemicals and it takes them used to it. you, You feel like your clothes aren't clean. You feel like, you know, You get used to it. Now, 20 years of not having those chemicals, if I walk into someone's house and there's a (laughs) plug-in or Febreze or they've got Tide or Gain and I hug them, I literally am so put off by it now that I'm not used to it. And it totally tastes, I mean, totally tastes, smells like a toxic chemical to me and not real and not good. Absolutely. And then when I every, smell essential oils, I'm like, mm, yum. <laughs> every time I go on a trip, if I have forgotten to bring my organic dog shampoo, which is what I use for myself in I the shower. It. I love it. <laughs> then, And I have to use what the hotel provides, which is usually some really expensive, froofy stuff. I feel like I've been slathered down in oil. When I get out of the shower, there's nothing clean about that. And if you allow your skin a chance to breathe and get away from that stuff long enough to experience an organic shower or an organic bath, you, I mean, you won't go back. You just, right. you just won't. And if this is a good time, I mean, I want to take just a second and let people understand that I'm this person that had the dog that fed them beneficial because I thought that was a really good product. And when he was eight years old, you know, I did everything the vet said. He got all of his rabies shots. He got all of his vaccinations. And it was just, I didn't know any better. So it's not like, you know, we're sitting up on some pedestal and have no experience with this. Henry Clay, Henry Clay, was my little toy poodle that, I mean, that dog was with me through some of the worst times of my life. And when he was eight years old, he was diagnosed with cancer. And I went to the vet and it's like, well, all of a sudden he got sick. He's like, no. And the vet didn't, you know, ironically, it was a traditional vet that that I was going to. And he said, because Henry's um, cancer first showed up in his urinary tract, 
and he tended to pee like a little girl and just was down close to the ground, that he felt like it was caused by exposure to environmental toxins. And, and I didn't even have had said that. Wow. Yeah. But yeah. I didn't know to be surprised by that at the time because I didn't know anything. Right. And so, you know, he he went through three years of treatment and surgery. He went into remission a couple of times. It stayed localized so that, you know, we felt like it was it was caught. And when he was just getting ready to go into the third year of surviving cancer, it metastasized and went to his brain stem. Well, my background is working with neurological patients and occupational therapy. I did that for 15 years before. And this dog, um, at that point, he was already aspirating. His, his vision was going. Mm -hmm. He had the facial droop. His equilibrium was off. His balance was off. I mean, just so many things. And um, he was a young dog, you know, I mean, he wasn't, he was an adult dog, but he was a young adult dog. And the vet said that he would probably have about four to six weeks, maybe, of quality life because of the aspiration and, and the complications that he was already having. Well, that dog lived for 13 months, wow. months. And I know in my heart, because of how special that dog was to me that he survived that uh -oh. long because he knew that I had cancer before I knew that I had cancer. And he actually died on the day I was diagnosed 13 oh months God. later. Oh my gosh. It was the worst Friday. He died in the morning and I got the call in the afternoon that my cancer was metastatic. It was very aggressive it was right before Thanksgiving. I wanted to wait till after the first of the year to start treatment. Absolutely not. In October, you did not have a palpable mass, and now it's a golf ball size a month later. We will be starting treatment immediately. And after my very first round of chemo, my cell counts went to the basement, literally, and I was classified medically as infection fatal which is as bad as it sounds. And in January, when the colds and pneumonia and flu and all that is rampant, literally my oncologist said, do not leave the house except to come here for treatment because if you get sick, you will not survive. Wow. And so he knew there were dogs at home. He said, they're going out for walks. You need to start bathing them more often because, you know, by now I'm trying to clean up my own act and, and learn about ingredients and choose, you know, healthier options and organic when possible. And I thought I knew how to read a label on a shampoo bottle. I'm a reasonably intelligent person. We all are. And, um, you know, what I learned was I knew how to be marketed to. Yep. Because the product that I chose ended up being a detergent-based shampoo. It was full of surfactants. Not, not listed on the label, not that I even would have known what it was if it had been at that right. point. But, you know, within a couple of weeks of my dogs getting more frequent baths, thanks to Angela, who was doing the bathing, they're <laughs> starting to scratch and itch and get dandruffy. I'm like, well, what in the world are we doing to the dogs? And so that turned into an ingredient deep dive because I just made up the my, my mind that if I survived, which <laughs> there was a time period there where that was not known, <laughs> wow. that if I did survive, that we were going to do something different going forward in the pet industry to help clean it up, to help bring healthier products to the grooming market specifically, and to be 100% tra transparent about it. And the only way that we could do that and distinguish ourselves from everybody else and it's a $36 billion segment of the industry, was to go through the USD National Organic Program because it's the only way you get the third-party validation. It's the only way that people can pick up a bottle, know that they're looking at the full ingredients list on the panel, and know that there, there are no contaminants like 1,4-dioxane or anything else. There, there is no issue of there being any of those contaminants because all of the suppliers that are 
uh, you know, part of the organic program too, are already vetted, they're already confirmed to have grown organically and taken the ne next step to have it certified. And so, you know, we just, we knew that's the route that we had to go if we wanted to be different than anybody else. And so it wasn't the inexpensive route to go. It's not it's not inexpensive to be certified, and we have to re maintain our certification on every single label, on every single size, every single year. And if if a supplier, we lose a supplier because of a, you know, catastrophic hurricane or whatever, um, we have to re recertify. If we yep. change an ingredient in a product, we have to recertify. And it's not inexpensive to do that. But when you look at our price, because I was so committed to this, that people would not have to pick up a bottle of toxic goo in one hand and a bottle of our certified organic dog shampoo and put it back because it was too expensive. Right. And so we have, we have consistently not charged what we should <laughs> Uh, on our original line of shampoos so that people would never feel like they had to make that choice. And if they were committed enough to do so, they could switch to organic. Good. And, and you're going to either pay now or pay later. And exactly. so why not yeah. be proactive instead of reactive to whatever happens? Thank you. Exactly. Um, everything that you do, we do here also. It's kind of opposite though, because it was a brand new industry. So I didn't even know what people were going to do wrong. I didn't know how they were going to lie, cheat and steal. And then, you know, yeah. it's like, it's so easy to do it the right way. It's not the cheapest. It's no. that's definitely not. It's hard. It's a lot harder to source organic ingredients, but, um, yeah, and it's, it's a lot harder to source pure ingredients, right? I mean, our ingredients we source by the lot number, right? So when we buy certified organic coconut oil, we buy that lot of coconut oil, which is what's certified. Yeah. And when we use up all of what we've bought, we have to recertify to a new lot. I mean, it's, you know, it's not just us ordering up a dry chemical that's shipped in. Right. And we don't have to care about, you know, the purity or, you know, whatever about that chemical i mean it's a tremendous amount of work to source yeah. the best and purest ingredients and i don't think people realize you know well i just spent a week sourcing a new lot of, <laughs> you know an ingredient you know and they think oh you just order it up it's right. not quite no. that simple it's not that simple i always tell people that it was so funny because i thought um when i start got into this industry i'm like okay i gotta find the seed I got to find the farmer. I got to find everything, how, who's doing it, growing the strain I want, the way I want, you know, all that good stuff. That was a lot easier than sourcing the other ingredients to put in there. And that actually cool. took, took me a lot longer and it was difficult. So I know what it's like. And I just want to say thank you for making a, being a disruptor in this industry um, and putting a product out there that is good enough for your dogs and my dogs. That's what I don't understand. How do you like make a product that you wouldn't even give to your own dogs? You know, <laughs> why would you put those chemicals in them or on them? Um, uh, we test, we test everything on us before it ever gets anywhere near our same. dogs. So do we, and, we drink yeah. it, put it on. Put, <laughs> and then after we, we, sir, we do well, we put it on all our dogs at the farm. Everybody tries it. I know I, that would be like the worst. I would never, ever put any animal or person because you're touching whatever that chemical is. Anyway, yeah. we're so out of time. So I gotta <laughs> let, let you ladies go. But um, if anybody wants more information, let's give them that website again. I had it up and I lost it. I know yours is for legger, for dash legger.com for all of your products. And what is, give us that your database one more time. Yep. And the pet shampoo ingredient database.com. And I'd also like to throw out there that if you're switching from a traditional dog shampoo to a true organic, we have a lot of tips on how to do that on our website. You awesome. know, your first bath, you might notice some skin residue on their coats. As you continue to wash them, that goes away. Um, it really depends on how healthy their skin was to begin with. And wow. You know, once you've really transitioned over to a true organic shampoo like Four Legger, their naturally healthy coat will start to emerge. So 
absolutely come to the website, look stuff up. If you have any questions, contact us. Um, Melissa likes to take a lot of those support questions herself because she is absolutely passionate about helping people and their dogs. Thank you. You both are. Thank you so much, Melissa and Angela Fourlegger. You're the best. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Angela. Thank you.